Development program, uh, Mr. Stefan and Claudia. Uh, so, this is a, a very special session, and actually, uh, we are all flying from the east coast of the globe, uh, you know, and I'm very happy to have everyone here. Uh, in the room just uh, in behind me, uh, we have a small audience, and uh, this is also being recorded mm -hmm. and being shared via our system as well as. working group that have uh, developed uh, Asia-Pacific Regional VLR guidelines. So I think part of the discussion today is also to share the work done by the PPSU uh, team. But before uh, we proceed, I would like to invite Mr. Stephen Presner, who's our United Nations Resident Coordinator for Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei Darussalam uh, to, you know, give his views, his opinions, especially in this local acceleration uh, action for the Sustainable Development Goals. So, Stephen, if you could share your thoughts and your wisdom with all members here. Thank you so much, Nalisa, and I hope you can all hear me. Um, it's great uh, to be on this session, and uh, I, I'll start by congratulating uh, the organizers of this ambitious um, Malaysia Urban Forum, the second one, uh, you know, for uh, I think uh, a, a, a very ambitious forum in, in challenging times. So, Nalisa, my congratulations go to you uh, to make this happen together with the government and UN Habitat and UN ESCAP. I think it's uh, yet another manifestation of the excellent collaboration between uh, government uh, uh, implementing partners and the UN in Malaysia. Um, now, uh, I think uh, what is very clear is that uh, in countries with a uh, high urbanization rate, such as uh, Malaysia, that the SDGs will be achieved if the cities and towns are achieving and making big contributions to the achievement of SDGs. Uh, in, uh, uh, currently, we have 76% uh, of the population um, uh, in, 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 in cities, living in cities, and by uh, 2030, we'll even have 80% of our urban dwellers in um, cities. Uh, equally, of course, uh, the SDGs will be uh, uh, achieved uh, in terms of, for example, decarbonization and climate change if cities succeed, um, if, uh, uh, you know, inclusiveness is achieved in cities. So uh, that uh, is just to kind of set the stage. But what I'm really going to talk about is really the 
the measurement and the reporting on um, uh, on uh, SDG achievements. Uh, we have, as you all know, the voluntary national report. Um, uh, you know, as a process globally that uh, uh, is a kind of a mechanism that allows countries to report. And I'm so happy to um, uh, you know present to you now some of the lessons about the voluntary local reports. Um, the VLR uh, guidelines that have been developed by the working group that uh, Norlisa was just introducing. So the, um, we know that uh, the, there's a, a, a rigorous national monitoring mechanism uh, is needed during the time of the 12th Malaysia plan. And uh, we are collaborating with uh, the government on, on making this happen. Uh, we're calling it the, uh, the national progress uh, SDG progress uh, monitoring, um, and that is happening. But uh, it, it, we need to break this down at a city level um, to really see how cities are doing with regard to the achievement uh, of uh, the SDGs, how they are doing with regard to SDG localization. And there I want to mention the importance of the second national urbanization policy, uh, 2016 to 2025 which is an excellent start, I believe, in ensuring the engagement of local authorities in the process of monitoring the SDGs. Uh, I'd like to upfront comment uh, some of the forerunner cities, including Penang, Sebarong Parai, Shah Alam, Subang Jaya uh, in Malaysia that have been leading the way in exploring uh, the important development of such a, a, a tool, the, namely the, the voluntary local report. And uh, uh, what we have uh, seen so far is that first of all, you need to have a, a good quality set of data. And we have good example about this in Malaysia, uh, such as the Malaysian Urban Rural Indicators Network for Sustainable Development and uh, the integrated land use planning information system by Plan Malaysia. Uh, again, this is an area where the UN system collaborates with the local authorities and the authorities that uh, kind of collect and uh, structure this data. I'm just uh, here mentioning the uh, Iskandar Regional Development Authority, uh, which collaborates with UN agencies such as UNDP and UN Habitat. Uh, that are supporting so-called urban observatories uh, to consolidate urban data and make them useful for urban planners and uh, urban policy makers. Um, uh, again, uh, also in this uh, area, I want to kind of uh, comment the partnership between Urbanized Malaysia, UNSCAP and UN Habitat uh, in the development of uh, regional VLR guidelines which will provide a sound basis and, and guidance for cities to, to undertake these reviews uh, and to give them uh, the tool to then uh, kind of address certain shortcomings and certain, certain gaps based on, on, on data analysis and uh, participatory processes uh, to move forward with the SDGs. So a few points on these vo voluntary local reviews. Um, during the UN uh, General Assembly in September 2019, uh, New York City launched for the first time the so-called uh, Voluntary Local Review Declaration, um, which was intended for local and regional governments to formally commit to report on their SDG progress. And reporting on SDG progress is always, of course, going hand in hand with uh, again also then planning forward actions to address some of the shortcomings. We know from that that uh, uh, like anywhere else, uh, SDG achievement at local level requires a whole of society approach, um, which uh, uh, will be achieved if local authorities get together with key stakeholders, including the private sector, including NGOs, including academia, um, to work together to achieve the uh, SDGs. And at, at UN level, this will be facilitated through the um, so-called UNSTCF, which is the United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework. Uh, that is our collaborative uh, framework together with the government 
between 2021 to 2025. It will be approved uh, in about a month's time and uh, then we are ready for action for the next five years. Now, I think what is important is that uh, local and regional governments uh, need to be actively involved in all steps of the process. This cannot be an outside uh, kind of process. This needs to be uh, done together with uh, the key actors, obviously, and needs to transfer ownership to the key actors of the local and regional governments so that they can take forward um, the SDG achievements uh, related to uh, them at, 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 at local level. Um, then another, another issue that I want to mention here is um, that uh, uh, I think these VLRs have a very good potential to strengthen the local governments in key issues relevant to the SDGs, such as uh, in transparency, in governance, in institutional accountability by local authorities in line with SDG 16. Um, uh, we, uh, we also think that the VLRs, if done in a correct way, will uh, lead to more tailored services uh, for vulnerable segments of society because they will bring to bear uh, a lot more clearly the uh, principle of leaving no one behind which is sometimes forgotten, of course, in urban and local planning. Uh, but through uh, the SDGs as a framework, this will uh, very prominently, I think, uh, be, be introduced and strengthened. We think that this VLRs, because it's one uh, kind of set of guidelines, uh, um, promotes opportunities for cross-fertilization and best practices. So uh, it's a great tool uh, of uh, a city-to-city -city cooperation and uh, you know, sharing uh, good practice and, and sharing collaborative experience and expertise and lessons learned between cities and towns. Um, so uh, uh, in conclusion, we feel that uh, uh, these VLRs, voluntary local reviews, uh, can act as a unifying exercise around the uh, sustainable development goals uh, to catalyze new models of governance, but also new models of local development with a focus on leaving no one behind, uh, with a focus on uh, sustainability, and with a uh, focus on, on integrated achievements of local development goals. So these, I think, are all the strength of this uh, very, very important and innovative tool. And I would like to upfront commend all uh, the cities and towns uh, to uh, take part in this exercise and uh, being really kind of uh, um, forerunners in, in showing how SDGs can be systematically taken forward and then reported on at local level. So uh, uh, once again, uh, greetings uh, from my side and uh, I'm uh, very eager to follow this because I think it's a great way of uh, uh, localizing the SDGs. We know that uh, the SDGs will have to be aggregated at national level, but they will have to be achieved largely at local level. Thank you very much, Melissa, and greetings to all. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, uh, just to inform everyone, actually, the executive director of UN Habitat is, has also joined us. She's actually in the uh, the room where participants are also joining us uh, physically. So. Um, I think what Stephen has mentioned just now is, I, I definitely agree uh, fully. You know, I think uh, by doing their VLR, uh, preparing their roadmaps, aligning all their local blueprints uh, to the SDG goals, it's it sort of helps them to have a more uh, formalized system in terms of ensuring that their sustainable agenda is in place. You know. Especially in, in Malaysia, actually, uh, most of us, most organizations, most local governments have a lot of uh, documents, visionary documents. You know, we have our local plan documents, we have their uh, strategic blueprints at the local government level. And on top of that, we also have national policies, state policies, and again, we have the SDG goals. So uh, a lot of times, uh, the alignment we don't understand on how to realign uh, all this together. 
So I think uh, by doing the VLR, it actually allows them to think uh, more systematically. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for that, Stephen. And uh, I think our next uh, is actually a joint presentation uh, on the Asia Pacific Regional VLR uh, guidelines. And we have two presenters uh, on this, Mr. Samiuddin Ahmad who's uh, the Regional Sustainable Development Consultant for UNFCAP uh, or the United Nations uh, Economic Social uh, Commission for Asia Pacific uh, under the Environment and Development Division. And also we have Martino uh, Mirag Miraglia. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Martino, uh, who's our Program Officer, Technical Focal Point, for local and regional governments and VLR, Urban Practices Branch under the United Nations Human Settlements Program or UN Habitat. So I, I leave it to the two gentlemen to actually uh, take this session forward. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes, Sunny, we can hear you. Okay, uh, let me quickly um, try to get my presentation on. This is a very new platform for me. Let me give it a try, Sammy, and then if not, then over to you. Give me a moment. Sure. Uh, do you see my screen? Um, I don't see anything yet. Not uh, yet. Okay, give me a second then. Um, then I'll do it here. Uh, this one. Okay, is that a, is the screen showing now? Great. So I mean, yeah. just say the next slide when you need to go. Great. Thank you so much. Um, right. So good afternoon, everyone. It's a it's a pleasure for me to speak to you today. Um, as uh, Madam Nourish already introduced, I'm Sami. I'm working with the urban team of SCAP based in Bangkok. Now. You might be aware that uh, SCAP is mandated to support the follow-up and review of the 2030 agenda in the Asia Pacific region. And we do a lot to support member states with follow-up and review. Um, at the national level, we provide capacity building support for VLRs. Um, at the regional level, we facilitate peer learning, um, among other things, via the regional SDG forum, um, which is the Asia Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development. And I'll take the next few minutes to discuss uh, what we hope to offer to cities in the coming weeks uh, to review local progress. Next slide, please. Now, just to very briefly go through uh, what this initiative is about, um, the, the Asia Pacific Regional VLR Guideline is being jointly undertaken with the Penang Platform for Sustainable Urbanization, or PPSU of which SCAP, UN Habitat, uh, and Urbanize are a part of. And it also includes other partners such as UCLG SPAC, IGES, uh, UNDP, and others. Um, just for the sake of time, I'll quickly move over to the other slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, before going into the guidelines themselves, just to give a very quick primer on what exactly a voluntary local review is. Um, a VLR is basically a process through which local governments undertake a voluntary review of their progress towards delivering the 2030 agenda and the SDGs. Now, it's important to keep in mind that VLRs don't really have a fixed working definition. 
uh, but this actually highlights the heterogeneity of um, local international government uh, and the diversity of territorial and institutional context in which they operate. Um, the VLRs are guided by the same principles as those of the SDGs, um, which is around leaving no one behind, the right to city and multi-stakeholder engagement, universality, uh, the need for robust evidence base for action, uh, and embracing an integration of environmental, economic, spatial, and social systems. It's not officially a part of the review architecture of the 2030 agenda, uh, but the VLRs, if you look at it from a political perspective, um, they really enable dialogue between different stakeholders, local agencies, and levels of government, and align local public policies and often national government development strategies through the common framework of the SDGs. Um, from a social perspective, VLRs facilitate civic engagement and transparency through sh shared vision and a participatory approach. And finally, from a planning perspective, VLRs steer budgeting and catalytic infrastructure projects through local prioritization of SDG goals and targets. Now, as of April 2020, um, six local authorities have presented their VLRs um, at the HSBF from the Asia Pacific region. So that is uh, Hamamatsu, Kitakirisu, Shimokawa Town, and Teruma in Japan, and Taipei and New Taipei in Taiwan province of China. Next slide, please. Now, what are we trying to really solve here um, with these guidelines? What is exactly the problem? Many cities in Asia and the Pacific don't even, don't really know what the SDGs are, let alone what a voluntary local review is. They're not fully sold on the idea of why they should conduct one. And even if they wanted to do a VLR, who is really supposed to be in charge? How are they supposed to go about it? Um, can they do it whenever they please? So all this refers to a clear lack of guidance for cities on how to do a review of local SDG process. Next slide, please. So what is the solution? The solution to this particular problem is to have a step-by-step -step guide for local government leaders and stakeholders on how to review progress on the SDGs and use it as a tool for strengthening evidence-based policymaking. The solution should build confidence among city authorities to conduct a VLR, not alone, but with all relevant actors, and through the process, be able to mobilize new partnerships and resources. Next slide, please. Now, ESCAT, together with the other PTSU members, is finalizing the development of the regional guideline on VLRs, as was mentioned. It uh, builds on existing resources produced by other organizational institutions, such as IGES, European Institution, UCLG, uh, UN Habitat, and many others. But this is the first VLR-focused knowledge product that takes into account the specificities of a particular region. We have designed it to be simple and straightforward. Uh, it contains useful examples, checklists, and templates um, that, so that it can be a very practical addition to any local policymakers VLR toolkit. We also try to keep it as holistic as possible. Um, the guideline will introduce the 2030 agenda to the readers, discuss key concepts, uh, and the process of conducting a VLR. It will also contain useful information on how to develop the VLR report, and what to do afterwards. And while developing this guideline, we have been mindful of the demands that have come up from the region over the last few years, particularly around horizontal and vertical policy coherence. And as a result, we have dedicated an entire chapter in the document that focuses on strengthening VLR Vienna integration. Next slide. What are some of the key messages that have come out from the um, process of developing this guideline? Firstly, around institutional ownership and arrangement. We see that there is a clear need for showcasing political support. Um, having high level support, for example, from the mayor or the governor is one of the most powerful tools a city or region can have to move the VLR process forward. There is also a need to appropriately structure the delivery of the VLR and set up contextually relevant models of institutional arrangement. And this, of course, depends on factors such as capacity, capacity, resources that are available, etc. 
um, so you can do a local review that is city led or city wide or regional. They can have one team coordinating the work or partner with other agencies or stakeholders. And each of this has its own pros and cons. Um, we see uh, from DLRs uh, that have already been produced uh, that cities should map their existing policies and strategies against all 17 SDGs uh, because this offers better comparability. comparability. Um, cities can also do this against the five pillars of sustainable development. So, which is people, prosperity, planet, partnership, and peace. Um, we see that cities need to develop robust stakeholder engagement plans um, that engage stakeholders in a meaningful way. And particular attention um, should be paid to vulnerable groups, uh, which, is, which is a key concern in the issue of this region in particular. Um, cities can also choose to set their own indicators uh, to collect data or adopt existing sets. Um, um, there, uh, there are sets produced by UN Habitat, the uh, UN Regional Commission for Europe, uh, and other organizations that cities have already adopted to some extent. And we see that DLR VNR integration holds many benefits for both local and national governments. And responsible authorities at both levels can take action to strengthen that integration uh, even further. Next slide. So what we hope is that the regional guideline will be an offering that is flexible and scalable enough to meet the needs of different users. Um, we are hoping that it can grow to support policy change at the local level that cities are striving for and connect it to a larger vision of the 2030 agenda. And we finally, we really see a lot of potential of our product um, helping cities to mobilize partnerships that are issue specific and action oriented and pull together resources from multiple stakeholders to act as a driver of community progress. Next slide, please. Now, we are planning to do a virtual launch of the Asia Pacific Regional VLR guidelines next month on the 30th of October, in line with the regional commemoration of World Cities Day. And we will definitely be sending out an invitation to um, all the participants here. And we hope to pilot the guidelines in a few cities in the region. Um, we have identified four cities in Southeast Asia and one city in the Pacific. And we are also in conversation to identify a few more pilot cities in South Asia. And I also know that uh, some cities uh, in Australia are also very interested uh, in conducting a VLR in the coming months and using the guideline as a resource. And the idea is to support cities uh, to conduct a VLR in the coming months and we allow them to showcase it uh, in the upcoming ASEAN Mayors Forum as well as the eighth Asia Pacific Forum for Sustainable Development. Next slide, please. Um, going beyond the VLR guideline a bit, this is uh, something of, an, um, of a prototype that we have worked on internally within SCAP and something uh, that we hope to um, um, develop further in the future is to have a digital web portal um, based around the contents of the guideline. Uh, we want to make this as interactive as possible. We want it to be practical so that the users can access the tools and the templates and the uh, checklist that we have um, included in the guidelines in a very accessible way. We want it to be as targeted as possible so different users coming from different backgrounds can have access to the information that is most relevant to them. And we want this experience to be as collaborative as possible. So uh, inviting users to SCAP's existing SDG community of practice, where they'll be able to connect and learn from each other. This is very much at a prototype stage still, but this is something that we're very eager to build on further. Next slide. And that's it, that's it from my end. Um, sorry for the very quick run through of the presentation. I'm just keeping an eye on the clock here. Uh, happy to answer any questions that anyone might have in during the Q&A session. Thank you. Thanks. Martino, uh, thank you, Sami. Thank you for the uh, good introduction on the regional, uh, the VLR that has been prepared for the Asia Pacific. So Martino, is that maybe you can proceed? Hi, Najila, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm in Italy, and it's uh, 
almost 9, 9 a.m. I'm pretty sure that you are, you are in different time zones now. Uh, Martino from UN Habitat, and thanks for the, for like inviting me. I will uh, complement a bit the presentation of Sami, going a bit through what is actually UN Habitat doing to support DLRs uh, globally. Um, and uh, please, uh, Tam, if you can, uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, thank you. So I will be I will be very quick because Sami already gave you uh, all uh, a good introduction and presentation of what a DLR is. Um, I would like to stress a point that uh, from my and our point of view, from UN Habitat point of view, a DLR is uh, before it, beyond being more than a monitoring tool, they can be a strategic tool to monitor and support the COVID-19 uh, recovery process. When we talk about COVID-19 uh, and the building back better and the sustainable the recovery process, uh, like going towards that and implementing the SDGs are two sides on the same coin. So DLRs can actually, I say, present and uh, give some kind of evidence uh, to local and regional governments and, and furthermore to national ones to uh, move forward in this uh, uh, building back, back, back better process. So they're very important monitoring, pro monitoring tools also for the region. Next slide, please, Tom. And uh, why UN Habitat? I mean, why why am I speaking in this in this uh, uh, in this in this session here? So UN Habitat is a UN. First of all, like UN Habitat works with ESCAP, as as Sammy said, and with a lot of international partners on the DLR on the DLR issue. And why? Because we are agency uh, that uh, lead the work with local and regional governments based on a unique expertise on urbanization, territorial development, uh, um, th that includes also monitoring evaluation uh, processes. Uh, within the VLR context, we work as an intermediary body between uh, the cities and UN systems. We collect VLRs and we make sure that they feed into the relevant uh, UN uh, UN processes uh, and uh, to share them to share those VLRs also with the between agencies such as UNDESA, which is a bit uh, custodian of the of the reporting of the official reporting process uh, within uh, within the UN. Mm, the experience in supporting VLRs and therefore we have developed a fully fledged methodology on how to conduct them. And uh, again, we, we building on the fact that. DLRs are more than a monitoring tool. We, we, we see them and we look at them as something that are part of a more comprehensive approach uh, towards the SDG location. So uh, local and regional governments should not look and uh, turn towards the, SDG, the SDGs to conduct a DLR. Uh, they should uh, conduct a DLR because they want to implement the SDGs. So the reasoning is the opposite. Uh, Tan, the next one, please. So uh, <coughs> what I... Uh, what I would like here to just just to highlight very quickly is uh, that to complement also what Sami said, UN Habitat has a set of uh, as a comprehensive approach and a set of tools at the service of the local and regional governments and uh, uh, and cities uh, that can help uh, the SDG localization and where the VLRs and the data analysis and monitoring evaluation holds a central role. Uh, so the first one, uh, the next slide, please, then. Uh, then. Uh, the first, uh, the first point is the global monitoring framework, as you know, and in the different talks and uh, sharing that we had with, uh, uh, with, with that we have daily with local and regional governments, the main issue sometimes uh, and most of the times is data availability and management. So what UN Habitat now, UN Habitat now is coordinating and is trying to to create a global urban monitoring framework uh, that will try to harmonize the existing urban indexes and tools uh, so to create a, a solid single framework to be then uh, uh, validated and endorsed by the UN uh, Statistical Commission to measure to measure the SDGs and the new urban uh, agenda related progresses at the local level. This we think will, will provide a boost and it represents an important step forward for cities to conduct uh, their DLRs as they will have uh, 
at their disposal a single framework to refer to when they're going to uh, uh, define indicators and, and measure data. We had the first group uh, expert group meeting in June 2020 where uh, of course, ESCAP was participating. We had in 100, more, more than one, uh, 100 participants, and where we defined a task team that is now charged of, of conducting and advancing advance the work on the monitoring framework. Next one, please. The second point of this uh, of, of approach that goes from data to impact and to projects uh, is the technical assistance and the knowledge development, where we are kind of uh, where we find ourselves a bit today. Um, um, uh, UN Habitat like provides direct assistance to voluntary to uh, cities uh, to develop the voluntary water use. We are doing it now with the Moscow, with Moscow, and uh, we are we are starting to do it uh, to do it with Florence uh, uh, in Italy. Uh, we also together with international partners, we also development of normative guidance and knowledge resources, and such as the partnership that with UCLG. Um, the VLR series we call that we launched in uh, uh, July 2020, the first guide, guidelines uh, that are kind of a general guidelines for VLRs uh, were launched also in, in July and they, they complement somehow the regional guidelines uh, that, the, that Sami were presenting before as like the regional guidelines uh, are much, much focused on the, on the stick while the global guidelines that uh, we developed together with UCLG are much uh, global and general and provide a general look on the process of the of, of DLR. So we really we're really happy about these really general guidelines and to have the possibility to contribute to them because uh, they offer a substantial framework, a substantial knowledge project for uh, um, uh, the local and regional governments in the region to conduct and advance in their DLR work. Um, the work uh, allowed us to develop a comprehensive methodology, so everything that we do is based on a strategy, is based on experience. Next one, Sam, and uh, almost the last. Um, so we start from data, we pass through capacity development and technical and, and technical assistance, assistance. And the last point is the how do we translate this? How do we make sure that the data and the and the capacity development translated into impact are translated into projects? And we do so through the SDG uh, cities so global programs. Or global program. I won't go into details of the program because uh, it has. Uh, uh, we will need a whole hour to just to present it, but just to make sure that, that you understand that what we need to do, what we want to do, is to make sure that uh, the evaluation and the priorities uh, that are defined at the city level and that are measured and monitored to the VLR are then translated into programs, uh, into projects and initiatives that are impactful and that can have the, uh, have the potential to attract, to attract uh, uh, finances and funding. Uh, so to the SDG program, we really look into the possibility of connecting local governments with donors so, so that this uh, financing and funding comes at the local level. Um, the last uh, part, Sam, will be just for you uh, for the months to come. What is next? I will invite you, I, I'm pleased to invite you tomorrow to uh, a couple of, event, of, of events on VLRs that we are holding as uh, as you inhabit at first of all the side event at the UN 20 summit in uh, Riyadh where we have mayors from Moscow and Madrid uh, and other high level representatives leading our ED and um, uh, the second one will be an event uh, that will be uh, in the context of uh, the sustainable uh, the festival of sustainable development here in Italy look at the SDG localization as a way to uh, for the sustainable recovery in the post covid post covid so in the in the covid 19 era and the uh, final two key uh, moments for us and for in, for the international community that uh, UN Habitat is convening, November 12, uh, the VLR Masterclass that we are organizing together with Moscow City uh, Council and the Moscow Urban Forum, where we are going to look really into the details uh, of, uh, of, of the of, of the region and uh, the last one will be uh, the VLR expert group meeting uh, in, that we are going to, going to organize together with my Chris that will look at the let's say new era of voluntary local use based on the years of experience to which also the Asia Pacific re uh, region uh, local environments contributed to. Uh, happy to reply to all of your questions later or uh, via chat or with whatever you want.
thanks again and thank you again for having us. Thank you, Martin. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I think it's very important and uh, actually very much in line with what uh, we are doing also in Malaysia. Today, uh, we also delivered to our Prime Minister uh, our Malaysia as Green Cities. Actually, we, in Malaysia, we are trying uh, very hard for our cities not to just go straight into the VLR process. I mean, uh, mainly because uh, we wanted them to ensure that whatever local blueprints that they have, uh, we should try to realign it first. And then from there, they go on into doing a VLR reporting. Uh, we are a little bit worried if they go straight into a VLR process, they might think that it's two different documents. Uh, we want it to be uh, more holistic in terms of ensuring that the sustainable development goals are embedded in in the work that they do. You know? So that's especially in their policy documents, in their action plans and so forth. I think this is uh, something that we can look for for the discussion level. Uh, but uh, but definitely thank you very much. And I'm wondering whether this uh, events that you are having is it open or, or it's actually very just close to uh, Moscow and and the and Italy or is it open to everyone? So uh, the as said to, tomorrow the U20 and the Festival of Sustainable Development are public events. Uh, the other two events in November and December, those they are closed at meetings. But still, okay. there will be upon invitation, so every participant that is willing to participate and to contribute substantially to the discussion will be more than happy. It will be more than happy to have them. Yeah. Okay. We want okay. to keep them closed just because it's like it's a substantial discussion to advance actually the global process on VLRs. So it's not an it's not an per se where we have panelists, but it's more a internal discussion and meeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. We we'll, we could then we can share the. September 30th uh, program yeah, with our stakeholders. Yeah. Thank you. So I think in the in the in our program um, is we have a panel discussion. And I'm going to cover two things here. One is the examples, VLR examples that we have from Asia and the Pacific. And secondly is of course to uh, speak about some of the SDG progress in Malaysia. So uh, maybe we could hear from Junichi, Junichi from the program director of the for, of IGES. Is Junichi online? Junichi, I see you, but uh, are you here with us? Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not here. Yeah, I'm wondering I'm, whether you would like to share with us some of the work that IGES has done since uh, the uh, most of the VLR done for Asia Pacific is actually a lot of it is from the Japanese cities. Yeah. yeah um, hello. So I am Fernando Ortiz. I work uh, oh, with Fujino with Fujino San. Which okay. unfortunately, there are some technical problems, so his microphone is not working at all. So I will step in to try to to uh, to do the presentation for him. So I'm very sorry for for this sudden change of plans, but I will try to do my best to fulfill Fujino's Fujino San's this role. This is what we call teamwork. Huh? Yes. So. <laughs> So anyway, thank you very much again for this wonderful opportunity, both in behalf of Fujino, of Fujino San and on myself, and for everybody working on on IGES on the work on on VLRs and SDGs. So I am going to briefly introduce IGES work on VLRs and the different steps we have been talking, and also just before I'm going to share that I didn't have the time to into, to include it into the slide. A uh, link to 
to one of our latest activities that there was the first webinar on DLRs made in Japan, which took place on September 19th. And this webinar to brought together many cities in Japan, part of the SDG Frontliner City, uh, cities which has made a B, uh, con have conducted a BLR to discuss the future of this movement. And even you and Desa made a, um, a, a video message to take part into this uh, webinar. So please, next slide. So indeed, I mean, in, in IDES, we, we have been very involved into the VLR movement. So uh, I just authored, uh, collaborated with uh, three of the first VLRs published in 2018. So the city of Hitachi Ushu, the city of Toyama, and the town of Shimokawa, which is, I think that today it is the smallest municipality to conduct a VLR. And also in 2019, the VLR of Hamamatsu City. And we also have an online platform, the Voluntary Local Review Lab, VLR Lab hosted by IGES, which we bring together uh, all the different VLRs that has been published. And we are also gathering other materials to support the development of VLRs. We also have a, the Shimokawa method for VLRs. So based on the experience of Shimokawa town, um, how cities can take into the VLR and a step-by-step -step guideline based on this um, particular case, as well as the State of Voluntary Local Reviews 2020, which review, which is a document that reviews 16 different VLRs uh, published up to April 2020, which brings together um, the learning from all these different, and it has one of the advantages, like it also reviews VLRs written in languages other than English, so including Spanish and Portuguese, which might be not available to other people working on the issue. So next slide, please. Um, so this is the, the, the preview, the screen caption from our online voluntary local review VLR lab. So as you can see here, um, we are marking all the different cities which has, which has been taking, uh, conducting a VLR, and we bring them together with other resources that are supporting for cities to support their VLR pathway. So next, please. And now uh, I will focus on two of our most recent publications. Uh, I'm, no? Okay, well, so we, I don't know, that this slide in my computer shows the cover of the State of the Voluntary Local Reviews 2020. So <laughs> sorry for, again, for another uh, tech problem. So, it's not showing, it's okay, we, you, you can go to the next one. So in the state of the voluntary local reviews 2020, uh, local action for global impact on achieving the SDGs, uh, this report looked into 16 different VLRs, all the, um, some of the, most of the available VLRs, or at least documents which are reviewing the VLR because the VLR, the VLR movement is growing quite a lot and it's also, um, there are implementation reports and other kind of reporting. So we focus particular on documents reviewing the, the implement the, um, in the SDGs and from at, across all continents. And based on the review, we extract like which are the four, the VLRs four meaningful opportunities and what is the main advantage that cities can take from conducting a VLR. So first, because a VLR allows the local government to listen to the needs of its people and reflect them into policy making. So not for over repeating, but we know that, that the spirit of the SDGs is leaving no one behind. And the VLR is a process that includes a really strong stakeholder engagement movement. So through this stakeholder engagement, you can better know what is the feeling of your citizen? It's something that policymakers keeps policymakers more grounded into the addressing the real needs of its population and how they can more easily uh, move towards achieving the SDGs. Also, a VLR invites for self for self reflection. Like it's not so much saying Thanks. how great our city is and how amazing our city is, 
but it's also time to address those gaps and shortcomings, which is part of every local authority, and figure out how to address that. So it's kind of an exercise that really makes cities to reflect into their local planning and to think how, what aspects they can improve and how they can align their policies also with their citizens' needs. So another aspect is that VLRs obviously are data driven. driven. So, uh, no, yeah, wait. <laughs> so they are data driven and they also um, can help to, to plan, better plan for the future we want to achieve. And finally, uh, a VLR also gives local state, local governments and local stakeholders a government into the a, a part into the global conversation on sustainable development. So by by taking into a VLR, local governments also join this growing glo global movement and can contribute both at the national level, the achievement of this, their own country's SDGs, but also at the global level and really taking into reality this leaving no one behind idea. So next. Uh, next, please. Uh, Fernando, give me a quick sec. I've lost the button. Okay, hang on a sec. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so uh, we can see here um, the, the general trends on the different VLRs that the report examines and how uh, what particular topics to sustain on all the VLRs. So in general, at least most of the VLRs align with the high level political forum a given year's particular um, SDG priorities. <laughs> but more recently, uh, we can see how there is more and more VLRs are looking into all of the SDGs. So they are not taking just simply into uh, four or five SDGs, but they are looking into all, which is more in line with the integral approach of the, of the SDGs. Um, next. Um, and in this slide, what we can, we can see as the different elements that one of the one of the part of the report analyzed was the main component of each VLR, and which are the which are the emphasis the different VLRs are playing in comparison with the guidelines also for the national voluntary reviews, and we can see how one of the one of the problems that we found is that not so many there is a growing number of VLRs that we would like to say that they are not really paying attention to means of implementation, which is somehow problematic, but in general, they, we can see how most of the VLRs are following all the different steps that are encouraged by also for the national level government. Next. So based on this, uh, I just have developed a five-tier approach, which revolves about five, different, five key pillars that involve all different actors. So first, looking into the local administration. Second, looking into the local communities and citizens. Third, uh, cities are not alone, so cities need to look wider to their both to their region and the and other cities surrounding them. First, to the national government and then to the global community. Next, and then we also publish the Simokawa method for voluntary local reviews, which is based on Simokawa's experience to VLR process. Next slide, please. So why we chose Shimokawa? Because we think it's a paradigmatic example that of a, a small town in one of the most remote and isolated areas of Japan in Hokkaido, uh, way up north, which is just with 3,500 people. And they took this challenge of, the, of taking the VLR, which brings a different story to that of other larger cities, kind of New York or LA or which has a larger budget and can have a larger team to conduct the VLR. Next. So the Shimokoa method for voluntary local reviews is based on 10 different steps, which are kind of scaffolding all the different levels to, of how the VLR process uh, uh, can work from preparing initial work, establishing a, a platform, 
give in a vision for the town to achieve the SDGs, gathering data, diagnosing the situation, aligning your policies with the SDGs, planning for action, and also the very important issue of tracking progress, to track, or planning how to track progress, to be able to monitor how your city, local authorities, doing into the localization process, to how to submit as a PLR and advocate and communicate into the global community. So thanks, uh, next. So this was just to another slide, oh yeah, come on. So this was just an idea of giving you a flavor of how um, the, le the work we are doing at IGES with the VLRs and that we continue doing. I am happy to answer any questions to the chat in person or if not just drop me an email and, and I will be more than happy to get into you and discuss any issue that you might have. So thank you very much for your time, for your presentation. Thank you, Fernando. Um, very interesting. Uh, so does that mean that when, when I just does this for another city, um, the, the process slightly changes according to that particular city or region? Uh, yes, I mean, the, the process is, is always varied. So there is, there is I, I don't think there is a one size fits all approach to the VLR. So the Shimokawa method try, tries to extract the main lessons from that we learn by conducting Shimokawa's VLR and also trying to make more into kind of a step guide that can be applied in different places. But also as every process and there is a lot of different factors coming into play. So this is not like a complete guideline, like an IKEA furniture guideline that if you take one step wrong, the sofa is not going to work. <laughs> but but it and we also have that image with the kind of the stir in putting the image into the stairs because they are steps that are built on top of the other. So you you need to have a clear platform and stakeholder engagement before it starts into the VLR. Like if you miss into one of the steps, there can be some there can be some progress coming. But it's also a more like like life, it's something more organic that you don't need to completely follow. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, any comments from the other panelists on the sharing by Fernando just now? Sam or uh, Martino or even Sami? Any reaction to that? Well, if I, if I, if I just add and stress what Fernando was saying, it is very important uh, because we are talking, we are, we are always talking about guidelines. We are always talking about guidances. So, and uh, it, is, it is important what Fernando said that uh, VLRs at the end of the day are owned and should reflect what the, what the local context is. So what we are all trying to do uh, at GAP, you know, at EGES is to provide support to them. But at the end of the day, it's upon the local you know, government to choose the way they want to go and to do the things uh, the way they feel like they should be doing. So that is very important because like lo local ownership and local context are really a key factor then to to go and, and to implement the SDGs. And again, uh, let me, we are not interested per se about the VLR. It is a tool, it is a means. It's not. It should not be the end. So um, just this is very important for our local government partners to understand. Yeah, we agree on that totally. We were supposed to join in by uh, other cities, which is uh, Kuala Lumpur as well as Shah Alam, but I'm not sure whether they managed to uh, log in. But maybe uh, I think we have just a little bit of time. I could go on what we just a short sharing on what Malaysia is also doing, uh, you know, and maybe it's also uh, something that another approach you know, that we are looking at. I'd like to share some of the work that Urbanis is doing. And actually we are working with some of the cities in Malaysia already. You know. So 
So yeah, this is our Malaysia SDG cookies. Um, like I say that you know we didn't we didn't want to say that you know um do a VLR because we need something that to to try to localize it as much as possible, uh, in terms of process that we are doing. So uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, road uh, road shows and trainings to all our local governments to try to tell them that. The sustainability agenda is not really a new agenda here in Malaysia. It's something that probably they've been doing, uh, especially when Malaysia is also very active in terms of local agenda 21. And there's a lot of programs that's actually already in line with some of the SDG goals. So um, we also try to come up with a framework that relates to our national uh, uh, vision, you know, and uh, we have uh, the Malaysia Shared Prosperity Vision 2030, and this vision in particular uh, focuses on the disparity between uh, income gaps and social gaps, and as well as uh, identify uh, enablers and uh, which are important to ensure that the Shared Prosperity Vision is uh, is achievable. So we sort of looked at. Uh, where our national policies are and then we align it to the SDG goals and link it back to the new urban agenda. So coming up with that uh, single universal framework to make it easy for our cities to understand that uh, they are all actually part of the same uh, direction, same goal, you know, rather than uh, having them thinking that they have to develop different uh, documents in order to fulfill the different uh, agendas. Eh? So, and Malaysia, of course, have our Malaysia National Voluntary Review. The last one we did was in 2017. Uh, we plan to submit uh, another v v uh, National Voluntary Review in 2021 and 2020 or, or 2022. So that's the target. So in 2017, as you can see, uh, there were only eight SDGs that were focused and definitely SDG 11 wasn't one of them. So in context of what we are trying to do here in, in localizing it at the, uh, according to the local government areas that the Ministry of Housing and Local Government is looking after, we sort of aligning it to the quite aligned with what the urban SDGs are trying to do. So at the national level, this is the framework in, in Malaysia in terms of governance. And uh, we are trying to uh, advocate that these SDGs are important for different levels of stakeholders. And even at the ministries, uh, we have a line to say which SDGs are directly related, which are, uh, and also SDGs that uh, the ministry uh, contributes in terms of national achievements and of course in terms of strategic planning uh, which we also do at the ministry we cover definitely a lot more of the SDGs. Eh? So um, align with our local governments in Malaysia we have 154 local government uh, we've actually looked at the provisions of our local government act and look at the functions that has been provided under the Act and align it to which SDGs the local government have a direct influence on. So that was some of the alignment work that we have done at, uh, at a national level. Uh, but what we've also tried to do is look at the 169 targets and see how much of that uh, provision of work that uh, the, the local government has that they are able to actually influence in terms of either decision making or uh, an everyday uh, work that they do. And this is where uh, we find that 61 of the SDG targets are directly related, uh, which is 70% uh, of the SDGs. And then we have some which are partially related and some which are not really related. Uh, this is looking at the act itself. So definitely we agree with uh, how SDG 11 is very important 
and uh, that's what we also encourage all our cities uh, to put priority on SDG 11 uh, as what has been promoted yeah, and defined and, and by UN Habitat. Yeah. So that's where the SDG roadmaps are, you know, it's actually a, a, a local uh, blueprint, a local action plan that uh, first of all must align itself to the national state and local uh, development agendas and at the same time uh, developing that local uh, roadmap where they involve local stakeholders in, in the process. And one of the key things we also emphasize is how they can link it to their funding resources and also their business models. So this is where um, in we sort of translate the 17 SDGs in terms of how the role of the local governments in Malaysia, how it's related uh, based on the provisional acts that we have. And we've also come up with uh, some kind of work in terms of identifying indicators because the authority in Malaysia to report on SDG at the national level is our economic planning unit and the agencies involved in data is our uh, statistics department. And even today we had we heard our, our statistician uh, reporting on in terms of data, SDG 3 has the most in terms of amount of data that we have. Uh, but we also realize that a lot of the indicators that is being used to measure at the national level cannot be used to measure at the local level. And that is why at the ministry level, uh, we've actually come up with lists of indicators for our local governments to use uh, in order for them to measure uh, where they are, you know, uh, and, and what their progress are. So in the end, uh, we've got some 264 local indicators that is to be used by our local government. In fact, what the ministry wants to do is actually they want to make it a national indicator, but that's a process that we are trying to do. So actually, this is our process, uh, just like what has been shared by Fernando just now, but we sort of simplified our process here. Uh, we call it the three plus one step. Uh, the first step is to relook back at uh, the baselines, doing the mapping and alignment and understanding the gaps. Uh, secondly, is to look at revisit their visions, you know, uh, relook at their priorities, and then only they, they start to uh, develop their SDG local actions and roadmaps. And after that, uh, that's where we encourage the cities who have already done their SDG uh, roadmaps to, to actually embark on the next journey, which is the VLR, where the commitments is actually uh, uh, to look at uh, which SDG, they, which is most ready for them to, to share uh, and also to align it with the, the global goals. So that's uh, the process that actually we've done. And in fact, we've, we've done it for Shahalam We've actually uh, done a measurement for, for them. And uh, yeah, actually it's quite an interesting process. Lah. So I think uh, I, I shouldn't go into more than that, but this is what we did for Shalam, just very quickly uh, in terms of the process that we did for them, assessment, participation, you know, looking at the analysis and how to accelerate that further. And uh, what is interesting is to measure where they are based on their documents. Uh, and uh, we did a lot of focus group discussion to see where the gaps are. And uh, yeah, so this was their first where they are in terms of trying to know which SDG is a priority, where they, where they think it is a priority, but they have not actually done anything. So this kind of reality check was was quite important also. So I think, uh, yeah, that that's uh, how we've approached it for Malaysia. And uh, even for Shah Alam, uh, now they are finalizing their roadmap. And hopefully they will be one of the first city to actually uh, do the VLR. So that's... Uh, the Shahalam experience and Malaysia, where we are. Yeah. Right. So
So I think, um, yeah. So Tam, uh, do you want to uh, say something? Hi, thanks, Madam Nolizer. Um, I'll keep it short. I, I think uh, um, my Zura from UCOG was going to join, but I'm, I'm, I think unfortunately she wasn't able to join here. Um, so maybe I'll just offer a, a few quick thoughts um, and then hand it back over to you to close or if there's kind of reflections from, from the, the panelists as well. So uh, I think um, firstly, just to mention that I think the undertaking that uh, you're, you're currently doing in Malaysia with SDG cities is, is certainly not, not a small one. Um, to, to be able to understand and, and build the linkages between the SDGs is not a simple task. And um, I know colleagues at, at SCAP have, have uh, undertaken some quite extensive uh, analysis of the different linkages in the SDGs, certainly at the national level, but through a systems thinking approach. And, and maybe some of that could, could lend towards that. And if SCAP colleagues wanted to share a bit more beyond that. But I think it fundamentally grounds um, the, the, the purpose and the interest of, of what we're trying to do at UN Habitat in doing uh, and doing uh, putting together a global urban monitoring framework as, as Martina had kindly shared a little early on as well. So I think it's very valuable. As I listen to, to the, the sharing from, from different colleagues, I think you know, ultimately what we, we're doing is we're, we're localizing it progressively even from national to local and, and, and some of the things and the successes that we've seen through in, in the regional um, Asia Pacific office through what we refer to as the UN Habitat People's Process is even going to a level beyond that and looking at community development committees, right? Um, in Malaysia, there's been some good examples. I mean, there was MurniNet that was shared by Stefan earlier on, looking at village level and, and township level. So, you know, how, how, how local do we go? And, and maybe because it, it's that local um, spirit and, and like enthusiasm from the cities that ultimately will support the implementation of VLR as well. So maybe we need to go down a level deeper. And then another reflection that I have in terms of this process is, I've made, maybe building on, on the, this point from Fernando, I, I, I really valued the, the concept of the VLR from the perspective of self-reflection. The question that I kind of have and, and to, to kind of pose to, to, to the audience or panelists and to, for us to think on further is to what extent do we make the, like this VLR process an internal process so that um, cities can feel comfortable in sharing their shortcomings and, and that they, we can work with them to overcome them and to what extent do we you know, use the VLR as a process to help them showcase their achievements, right? So in some ways there needs to be a, a, a pull and a take. So a, an internal process we, where we kind of guide them and support them and then an external process where we allow the VLR process to, to help um, showcase to them and, and others like these best practices. So I think creating a safe environment for the cities to meet and, and certainly one of the initiatives that uh, we're, we're partnering with SCAP and, and I just on also is uh, the Asia Pacific Mayors Academy also with UCLG ASPAC. I think this is a good example where we, we bring mayors together and we have this discussion in a much more kind of intimate environment where the cities can, can share openly about their challenges and they can progress forward on that as well. And then the final reflection that I had is really about this point about harmonizing existing urban indexes, right? So I think this is gonna be an ongoing challenge. I, I, I kind of um, building upon again, the point from Fernando around data driven, you know, we have this opportunity in Malaysia um, with the National Housing and Population Census, right? And so how do we utilize that census to, to capture the information that we need and build the foundation for the next years to come so that the census informs our work in terms of VLR as well. So these are some of the reflections that I had and uh, I really appreciated the time from the panelists in, in sharing with that and, and uh, look forward and continue our collaboration with, with partners on this further. And uh, um, if, if Mazura is on the line, then feel free to comment um, if not, handing back over to you, Madam Melissa. Thank you. Uh, Maizura, are you online with us? Some of the people online have numbers and like Martino is a one three six one three six. So yeah, so some doesn't have a name. Okay. Um. Don't I don't hear her. So anyway, um, I think it has been a great uh, sharing. Uh, it's a first good step, I think, uh, what work has been done through the uh, P9 platform for sustainable urbanization, PPSU group, and uh, which uh, Fernando, uh, which uh, Sammy had actually presented just now. And of course, uh, the sharing by IGES, and of course by Martino on work and UN Habitat. I think it's very similar, uh, definitely. Uh, ev ev everyone's the objectives are very similar, uh, and 
what is very important is that uh, why the cities must understand for me is they need to understand why they're doing the VLR, you know, how is it important? I think once they understand what the VLR can do for them, then it will be a, a document which they will, uh, not only will it be unique to them, but it's something that they will follow through. Uh, our challenge in Malaysia is that we don't want them to prepare documents that um, is being, because they've been instructed to do it, you know, rather than they realize that it's important for them, uh, that it could assist them in their everyday work. Uh, that's why uh, I think it, whatever, whichever cities that's doing a VLR, uh, that that understanding is, you know, the like Sammy have said, who, what, why, you know, I think those questions are, are really important uh, for cities to understand. So I, I am, uh, I think we've also come almost to the end of our time uh, because we've allocated just one hour for, for this. So I hope that uh, we could, I mean, just like what uh, Fernando uh, Martino have shared, probably is something that we can continue and uh, we could have, you know, uh, like uh, online classes also to be shared you know, uh, with some, uh, and I think this is something that learning from each other will help us progress much better in, in our work. Because definitely the VLR is not mandatory uh, and, you know, there's no real process also written for it yet. Uh, and I think uh, we are all learning from each other. We learn a lot from New York. We, we've we been online with them, with EU. We've been talking to many people uh, before we started our own journey. And I think um, the experience that we went through and the experience from all the panelists today is something that should be shared so that it be faster with, with just 10 years down the road. So um, uh, any last words from anyone before we uh, close the session? Yeah, maybe to say uh, thank you, Nazila absolutely uh, agreed on the on the, on the need for sharing, for partnership, for networking, for mm -hmm. pulling our common knowledge and uh, and resources to to push this, this agenda forward. And let me go back to the uh, to the meeting that I've shared before. Those will be surely some of the appointments where you you will be invited as organization working on ELRs. We hope to have is working on that. So uh, we will have already in the next two, three months, a couple of appointments where we can do this. And uh, on the support of you and Abita to, to do it and to bring uh, this agenda forward. And thanks again for, for, for the space and thank you for moderating and thank you for the work. Thank you. Um, Sami or Fernando? Um, thank you, Madam Alisa. Thank you so much for moderating. Uh, the session um, and also sharing the Malaysian experience and uh, just one quick word um, to let everyone know that uh, I mentioned before that we will be launching the uh, regional guidelines next month um, we hope to um, send out the invitations um, out to everyone here and other partners uh, and really encourage everyone to um, 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 encourage the use of the um, guidelines amongst different partners and cities um, to really see that uh, review of the SDGs are happening actively at the local level. Thank you. Thank you, Sami. Fernando? Uh, yes, uh, I would like also to thank you, Madam Norlisa, for your mod uh, moderating this session and for your very interesting presentation and insightful comments. So I, I agree with you that it is really important to the field learning ex exercise and also using the VLR as a tool to showcase, I would say, both our successes and also our failures and the difficulties on the path. It's not all, always shiny and beautiful. So probably if, you also, if we were more, more honest and also showcase the issues that we face and how we overcome them, that can also make more cities willing to take into this pathway. So thank you very much for this opportunity, both in behalf of me and of Eugenio Salon of IGES. Thank you very much. Right. 
probably I like to ask uh, the ED of UN Habitat if she has any words for all of us. You know, she's in the room virtually, uh, physically. So ED, if you uh, are you still there? Okay, I think she has left the room. Okay, all right. So um, I think um, that's all. Thank you so much. Uh, for having this session. Uh, hope to meet everyone again and one day to meet all of you uh, physically. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom, Sammy, Fernando. Thank you, Stefan and Martino. Yeah. Thanks and a lot. Junior, <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Sekarang belum dengar suara saya. Sekarang dengar tak suara saya? Check one two. Yes one two three four five six seven. One two.